Chapter 7, Section 5, Question 1. No radicals in the denominator. This is a section where we're spending the entire section on dividing with radicals. You'll notice that all of these have a radical in the denominator, and that is right out. There is something called simplified radical form, and we've been having you do that this entire time. It says that if you can pull something out, you pull something out. If you had something that has a fraction inside of a fraction, Inside of a radical, you split that apart. And if you have a radical in the denominator, you're going to do something to get rid of that. We've never had to do anything to get rid of that because it's always come out nicely in the past. Until now. We now have a radical in the denominator, and we're going to have to show work. And if you don't show work, you'll lose half points. All right, you have to show work on how to get rid of that. We know that with a square root, we need a pair to make it come out nicely. So I'm going to put a second square root of 3 in the denominator. And to be fair, I'm going to put a square root of 3 in the numerator. Folks, why did we do that? That is because this is secretly something divided by itself, which is 1. And from chapter 1, the multiplicative identity, it says that multiplied by 1, nobody really cares. So over here, we have negative. On the top, 1 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 3. On the bottom, I have a pair of threes inside. It comes outside once. The end done. Folks, a lot of people are like, I don't need to show work. I hear, I don't need full credit on this. I'd like an F. Folks, show the work. All right. Now, if you can reduce a fraction, I'm going to tell you that we have a problem that if you don't reduce it first, will become very difficult. You should always check to see if you can reduce. Some students try to reduce this inside number with this outside number. That's not right. Now, ooh, those are letters. They work the same way. In order to get the square root of b to come out nicely, I need another b on the inside. Same thing, top and bottom. Hey, we've been practicing this since chapter 2. Remember, we also did this in chapter 6, where we have to multiply top and bottom by the same thing. In Inside things go with inside things. We're going to get the square root of AB, and we have a pair on the inside, and it comes outside once. Done! How very nice. Here. Now, you could split it up, or you can leave it in here, but what's going to get rid of a square root of 3 in the denominator? I need another 3 in the denominator, just like I did there. I can do it as two separate ones. I can do it as one big square root over the entire thing. If you want to break this up, that's fine too. Inside numbers go with inside numbers, and I get the square root of 33. And then on the bottom, I get a pair of threes, so I get three. If, for some reason, this could simplify, you would need to simplify it. If you're doing all this correctly, though, if you reduced first, you should not have to do that. But somewhere along the way, we have lovingly put in problems where the answer will become something like the square root of 25, and people will be like, ah, the answer is the square root of 25, and we're like, what's the square root of 25? Or you will do all this work, and you will say, ah, the answer is 2 fourths, and we'll say, what's 2 fourths equal to you? And you will say, oopsies, I can simplify even further. Remember that there are these evil math teacher tricks. When you think you're done, check your answer, because sometimes, Here's one more thing. Chapter 7, Section 5, Question 2. But wait, there's more. We've done this with square roots. Now we're going to do this with cube roots, fifth roots, any number of roots that we can think of. You will even find at some point a ninth root out there. All right. We have a 1 over the cube root of 7. How many 7s do I need to make this come out nicely? I will need three total. I have one so far, so I will have to multiply by two more sevens. Now, some students said, oh, I don't want to multiply by the cube root of seven times seven. I want to multiply by the cube root of 49. Is that the same? Yes and no. 7 times 7 is 49, but the reason that you want this to be 7 times 7 is I need to see three sevens so that they come out nicely as 7. If you have a 7 and a 49, I have seen almost every student at some point write a 49 out there. But if you have all sevens, it comes out nicely as 7. 
More people will get it correctly if you do it this way. Then you multiply across here, and inside numbers with inside numbers, you will get 7 times 7. Now it is appropriate to have your 49. Ta-da! Done! Work, answer. Half credit, other half credit. Don't have this part, part of your work, you're going to lose half credit. So make sure you show this work. A lot of students don't want to show this work. They're so smart, they get Fs. Folks, don't be that kind of smart. All right, here we go. We have, let's break this one up. Last time we didn't break it up, but it might make a lot more sense if we break it up. Remember that eight breaks up into a whole bunch of twos? This is the time to use that skill. All right, how many twos do I need to make the bottom come out nicely? I need five twos. I have three twos. Oh no, I better make sure to pick that into a fifth root of, here's the other two twos, fifth root. Make sure I keep that index number there, because without that index number, bad times. All right, so I'm multiplying top and bottom by the same thing. Make sure you multiply top and bottom. I have seen some students who only multiply it on the bottom, and the bottom comes out nicely, and they're like, hey, look, everything's wonderful. But their numerator is no longer correct. So all of these twos, one, two, three, four, five, they're supposed to be five. They come out nicely as two. Inside numbers with inside numbers. Three, two, and two. That's three times four. That is 12. But we have to have that fifth root. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong answer. So we need to have the fifth root there. That is the answer. Some students want to reduce that. Some students want to reduce this. This is on the inside. That's on the outside. They cannot play together. This is on the inside. That's on the outside. They cannot play together. If you can reduce this, you could, but you shouldn't be able to. If you can reduce this, it means that you should have reduced this original fraction. Here we go. Oh, that is not a nice problem there, but it is very good. That 4 will break up into 2 times 2. 3 is a beautiful number. We do not have to mess with it, and we should not mess with it at all. All we need to do is make sure that all of our roots, our radicals, come out nicely. I need three. I have one, two. Here's the third one. Be careful. I see some students who know that they need three, so they put three here, and then they end up with five, and they end up with a mess. So be careful about that. We need a total of three to make it come out nicely. That three says one, two, three. That five says one, two, three, four, five. This three says one, two, three. That's why it can come out nicely on the bottom. So on the bottom, I have a three times, this comes out nicely as a two. On the top, I have a five and a cube root of two. So I now have a five cube root of two over six. The end. Chapter seven, section five, question three. Conjugates. Do you remember conjugates from a few slides ago from chapter five? We have been setting you up for this lesson right here. Conjugate was change the middle sign. These are binomials. I strongly recommend that you put these parentheses around them. And then we look at the denominator because remember for simplified radical form, if you can simplify it, you gotta simplify it. If you have a square root around the entire thing or a radical around an entire fraction, you gotta split it up into two little ones. And if you have a radical in the denominator, that is bad. We have to fix it. The way we fix it is to use the conjugate, which is same thing, change the middle sign. 5 plus square root of 3, we're going to multiply by 5 minus the square root of 3. A lot of students get this wrong because they just know from the past questions, hey, I just want to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. That's when this was being multiplied. Now that it's a binomial and we're adding, we have to use a different method because, hey, all that adding and subtracting stuff, that has been messing with our lives for a while. We are going to have to foil the top and we're going to foil the bottom. Bummer. All right. Foiling the top, we are going to get 15 minus 3 on the outside with a 3 on the inside, minus 5 on the outside and a 7 on the inside. Negative, negative is positive. Inside things with inside things, 3 times 7 is 21. First thing times first things, 25 minus 5 square root of 3. The 5 is on the outside, the 3 is on the inside. 
plus. Five is on the outside, three is on the inside. Positive and negative gives me negative, and a pair of threes on the inside comes outside as a three. If you are doing this correctly, these will cancel. Some students say, I'm so cool, I don't have to do those. And what they do is they end up not doing those, and they end up not doing those either. In which case, the entire thing's wrong, and I can't give you a darn thing. So, we are going to put these together. That's a plain number. There are no other plain numbers. That has a square root of 3. There's nothing else with a square root of 3. That has a square root of 7. There's nothing else with a square root of 7. That's a square root of 21. There's nothing else with a square root of 21. I can't combine anything in the numerator, which means this horrible four-term polynomial is part of my answer. And a lot of students get really nerve-wracked about that. Sometimes it will simplify and go together, but most times it won't. In the denominator, though, this is where it comes out beautifully. 25 minus 3. Aw, that is 22. Now, is this simplified of this? Yes, it is. Does it look simplified? No, the top exploded into mass chaos. But the thing is, is this is actually simplified radical form. If any of these can simplify, which as your evil math teacher, I swear will happen at some point, that you will get one of these that will simplify, or more than one. So if they can simplify, you'll have to simplify. We do not have a square root over an entire fraction, and the bottom number came out nicely. That is simplified radical form. So really what it's saying is if you have a square root in the denominator, we don't care what you do to the top. It is horrible, and it looks yucky. But the bottom came out nicely, and that's what matters. So, yay, that is simplified radical form. Please find these answers. And if you can combine these, you'll have to combine them. Chapter 7, Section 5, Question 4. Fix, then add. Folks, a lot of people see two fractions and they say, I survived Chapter 6. I'm going to make common denominators. Folks, don't make common denominators first. Because what we spent the entire section of 7.5 doing is getting rid of square roots in the denominator. That is the very first thing you will do or you're in trouble. All right, here we go. 7 over the square root of 5. How do we fix that? We have to multiply it top and bottom by square root of 5. That is secretly a 1, which will not change the value of it. And we still have this minus 4 square root of 5 over 7 hanging out. That is your work. And then you're going to simplify it as 7 square root of 5 over 5. And make sure that this is still there. A lot of students don't want to keep writing this. I'm actually going to leave some space because I'm planning ahead. Many students want to skip steps. Folks, don't skip steps. This right here, step 1 and step 2, that will get you half credit. Please make sure you can at least get half credit. But if you don't want to give me all that, I can't give you half credit. All right. Then, now is when we make the common denominators. Now that the bottoms are nice. I used to say that it didn't matter which one you did first. But the thing is, is that if you do it the other way, you have to get all the way through the problem. And most people don't. So I have decided that you've got to do it this way because this way, step one and step two gets you half credit. And that way, we can at least lock in either 50% or 100%. We are going to make common denominators. In this case, our common denominators are just multiply the two things together. If you had something like 6 and 9, remember you can't multiply them together and get 54. 6 and 9, the lowest common denominator or the least common multiple is 18. So be careful about that. That is also probably coming for you. From chapter 6, we have two fractions that now have common denominators. We want it over a single denominator. And this will give us 7 times 7 square root of 5 minus 5 times 4 square root of 5, extending out that vinculum so it doesn't fall off. That gives me 49 square root of 5 minus 20 square root of 5 all over 35. But wait, there's more. I could. Combine like terms because that's the square root of 5 and that's the square root of 5. Does that always work? Um, sometimes you'll have the same thing in the square root so that they will be common 
factors and you can add them together. But if that's a 5 and that's like a 21, then you wouldn't be able to. So these are like terms and you can add them together and get 29 square root of 5 over 35. Can you reduce this fraction? No, you can't. But if you could reduce the fraction, you would have to. Some students want to reduce here. You can't reduce the thing on the inside with the thing on the outside, so be very careful about that. You're looking for outside numbers, play with outside numbers. If you could reduce this, say it was 28 over 35. We could do something with that. That could be foreshadowing.